Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Deus Ex Human Revolution The Missing Link. Last time we met with our contact who turned out to be Lieutenant Natanya Keitner, Lieutenant Commander I should say, and she sent us off to investigate the detention wing. So let's get started toward that goal by checking out the admin sector. <clears throat> Alright, here we are at the entrance to the admin sector. At the start, there are only six guys in this entire section to worry about, so not too terrible. Although I probably should be careful of cameras and the button and the like. Anyway, I'm more interested in starting from the bottom and working my way up. So I'm going to take this elevator down to the basement. We'll check that out in a bit, but I'll just point out that this is Natanya Keitner's contact. His name is Garvin Quinn. Now, we can't get into his store just yet, but I'll say this. Right now, he sells a single Praxis kit. You'll want to buy that, again, if you're not playing Factory Zero. Are you Quinn? Yeah, that's me. Jensen, is it? You weren't followed, were you? And there, of course, we got a 2,400-point completionist bonus, 500-point ghost bonus, 250-point smooth operator bonus. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I can believe that. They're having a hell of a time keeping up with you. I intend on keeping it that way. Well, you've certainly ruffled a few feathers higher up. It's not like they don't know you're here. Stowed away on the ship, I mean. It's only a matter of time before they bring the hammer down. Put a stop to your gallivanting on the base. I just hope I'm not near you when the iron's hot and you're on the anvil. Look, Keitner said you can help me. Can you? Yeah. She told me to be expecting you. I'm just glad you came as soon as you did instead of going off on your own. There's enough kegs of powder lying around here already without throwing another loose cannon in the mix. You know how much we're risking to keep you off the radar? We've only got so much pull around here. It's Burke's show, and he'll do as he bloody well pleases, which means stamping out any rats the moment he gets wind of them. I'm grateful, but can we get on with it? I understand you run a nice little sideline in procurement. Aye. From time to time you might say of being inclined to do a little, uh, how should we call it? Bartering. On the side. Since the commander signed off on it, I suppose I could open my stock to you. For a price, that is. You mean I have to pay? What? Of course you have to bloody well pay. I ain't exactly a fucking army quartermaster down here. I'm just a civvy contractor trying to make ends meet. This ain't a bleeding charity. Considering the circumstances. Circumstances? What, that you're a fugitive and I'm risking my neck just talking to you? What are you trying to pull here? Although, I don't suppose you had anything to do with the stasis pod that was saved back on the ship. How do you know about that? Ah, so it was you, eh? Well, let's just say I have my sources and your little random act of kindness didn't go unnoticed. Tell you what, I'll give you a discount on me wares. Just no freebies or handouts. But now that I think of it, if you're looking for a little something for nothing and don't mind a little light work, I've got an errand that could use running. Consider it a special offer of sorts. You interested? About this special offer. All right, tell me about this special offer. Look, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but 
This beast is packing some serious heat. Especially in the form of those walking brick shithouse boxcars. If you get me a few odds and ends, I might be able to whip up a little something to make getting around easier. If you catch my meaning. What kind of something are we talking about here? Nothing fancy. Just a 329 series MPRS. A rocket launcher? That's right, mate. And custom built. But yours truly, of course. You see, while I might be able to get my fingers on some low-level arms, I'm a little restricted when it comes to military-grade bells and whistles. I'm itching to try out a new trigger propulsion mix. Maybe even recalibrate the guidance system for some extra punch. Sounds risky. While I or find messy. your enthusiasm for explosives slightly disturbing, something like this could come in handy. Like I always say, speak it softly for the birds when you got the biggest stick on the block. Look, all you gotta do is find me some components, and I'll do the rest. An earlier boat had a shipment of 329s, but I wasn't able to poach any of them before they made it to the armory. Luckily, a little sparrow in my employee managed to lose one through maintenance circulation, but he got himself shit can before I could collect. Now my little butte's lying around the base somewhere in bloody pieces. The launcher, I mean, not the wee man. Though, no idea what really happened to him. Right, so, long story short, you need me to find the parts and bring them back to you. Yeah, that about sums it up, I'd say. Just find me the trigger module, scope assembly, and launch a barrel, and we're in business. I could scrape up the rest from leftovers here in the shop. I think I already found some of the components. Are these them? Hey, let me see what you got there. That's the 329's barrel. And it looks like you also managed to find the trigger module. Just one to go and we're in business. <clears throat> Let's try special offer again. Got those parts for me? Still working on it. Like I said, check the cargo and receiving areas if you haven't already. And if someone managed to find one of them, you'd probably have luck searching the administration quarters. Alright, let's get more info. Uh, let's go with Quinn first. What exactly do you do here, Quinn? In a more civilized world, you might say I pass for the basis lead maintenance engineer. But if you look at it from Beltar's point of view, I might as well just be a glorified janitor. Pay's good though, so, you know, not complaining. If the pay's good, why the underground market? Well, why not? You see, civilian contractors operate under different jurisdiction when it comes to bringing outside goods into the base. So while the rank and file grunts can only order and receive essentials, toothpaste and the like, I, being the entrepreneurial chap that I am, offer a more uh, robust catalogue of goods and services. You know the sort. Smokes, beverages and uh, gentlemen's literature. How does this involve weapons? Now, now let me finish. As an enterprising fellow, I require an exchange of valuables for these slightly less than essential supplies and often receive some very non-civilian contractor regulated equipment in exchange, if you catch me drift. Now, normally, I launder my stock through a contact on the mainland, but a deal in Shanghai recently fell through, so lucky for you, I've got some excess inventory to move. Consider this whole arrangement uh, a matter of fortunate timing. And Keitner is okay with all of this? Uh, not exactly. You see, some time ago, the commander got wind of my little operation down here. But before she could throw me in the brig, I offered her something I knew she couldn't refuse. Information. I ain't bragging, but uh, I managed to build myself quite a little network of sparrows and gophers. I'd known for a while that she'd been at odds with that prick Burke. In the end, I reached a rather simple mutual agreement. I keep her in the loop, and she keeps my neck out of the noose, so to speak. Let's ask about the base. What can you tell me about this base? Nothing you don't know, probably. To the outside world, it's a Beltar Naval Logistics Headquarters and Supply Point for their Pacific operations. Beneath the surface, though, it's much, much more. How so? Look, nothing personal yet, but I prefer the commander to most of the informing. As far as I'm concerned, the less I know, and more importantly, the less I say in this matter, the better off we all are. And let's ask about Keitner. Tell me about the commander. Keitner. Lieutenant Commander, officially. But the grunts don't pay no mind to that. She's the commander, as far as they're concerned. It's the Reds who stick to the formalities, you see. Because they're Burke's boys. The Spooks. Special Operations. You might say there's a bit of a... division of loyalty among the troops. Between Keitner's men and Burke's? Aye. Since time immortal, there's always been a rivalry of sorts between Grunts and Spooks. I always assumed it came down to ego. But it's different here. Probably because Burke's different. What do you mean? Well, for a start, the man might be a righteous prick, but he's got the respect of his men. And the higher-ups think he's a visionary based on some fancy tech he drummed up a few years back. In other words, 
Amman's got a lot of influence and a lot of power, and uh, well, I don't think that old proverb needs repeating here. All right, let's go back. Let's enter the shop. No money back guarantee or warranty. You break it, you buy it. Let's see what he's got. He's got two packs of revolver ammo, three packs of pistol ammo, four packs of machine pistol ammo, three packs of shotgun cartridges, two packs of stun gun darts, two packs of combat rifle ammo, five typhoon ammo, and two rockets. He's got five beers, five other beers, five other beers, two hypo stims, two cyber boost pro energy jars, and three cyber boost pro energy packs. He's got one laser targeting system and he's got one Praxis kit. I'm gonna buy his energy stuff and his hypo stims. Now you want to buy this one Praxis kit and then if you're not playing Factory Zero you want to use your social enhancer with alpha pheromones on him to get access to his special stock. You need to buy this kit first because the special stock replaces everything. Then, inside the special stock, there will be two more Praxis kits you can buy. Anyway, let's... No refunds. Let's get on out of there. That'll suffice for now. Let's check out this vent over here. There's a 100 point traveler bonus. We got a beer up here, a damage upgrade. And that might be it. I don't know if Jensen can make this jump without the jump enhancement. Oh yeah, there he goes. Good. All right, let's crawl through here. That tense music should tell you that there are hostels somewhere nearby. There are four bad guys on this floor. And there's the there's the door back into the loading bay. <clears throat> well, there's one of four level three alarm panels you can hack. Here's a level one door hack, which I'll go ahead and perform. Like I said, nervousness aside. Got my nuke virus out of the data store, plus 25 XP for the hack. Well, let's see what's in here. A newspaper. Biochip recall causes more than headaches. Peaceful cues have begun erupting into violent riots at limb clinics worldwide. Worry over possible lasting effects of the biochip malfunction. 
combined with rumors of preferential treatment being extended to VIPs, law enforcement, and military personnel have sparked the mass revolts. Australian conflict set to escalate? The civil war that has raged for over two years in the Republic of Australia may be on the verge of escalating once again. On Saturday, South Australia Federation SAF troops led by Bell Tower military contractors clashed with Free States of Australia FSA rebels outside Alice Springs NT. One Bell Tower soldier was killed and five others wounded in what the SAF called a draw. Obviously, every death in Australia hurts, stated SAF Department of Defense spokesman Donald Friedel, but progress is being made. Bell Tower Associates continues to live up to its reputation, and in time, this rebellion will be put down. Privatization versus nationalization of oil deposits in the Australian territory of Antarctica are at the center of the divide. Now here's a level 2 computer terminal, which I don't have a password for, and obviously can't hack. I don't think there's any... Ah, uh, there's also desk drawers in this room with a pack of stun gun darts and a 50 credit chip. And then over here there's an ebook on the shelves. The Sleepwalking World. Wake up! The Illuminati are the secret masters of the planet. Imagine an ancient secret society with a global reach and a plan of unparalleled scope for the future of humanity. Imagine a power group known only as the Illuminati who have worked from the shadows to control the course of the world for hundreds of years. This is not fiction, this is fact. The Illuminati are forever hidden behind cat's paws and double blinds, and they seek to manipulate the globe through the exploitation of prominent organizations. Despite what they say, the United Nations, the World Bank, and the European Union were all originally created as vehicles to further the ambitions of the Illuminati, and all remain under its control. The Illuminati aims to bring about a world peace by replacing sovereign nations with an Illuminati-run one-world government. They want control of us all. Alright, let's see where these go. like this one's brought me into this room, which is fine. There's the second of four alarm panels you can hack on this floor. Let's go ahead and take this guy down. That leaves three gentlemen on this level. Now, he carries five pistol bullets. I'm going to stash his body in the vent. Right here in the wider part. Now, this computer... It was level one and could have been hacked if I had pulled him away. But the problem is, the only way to pull him away and lock the computer would forfeit the Factory Zero achievement because I'd have to use an explosive. So, if you're not playing Factory Zero, you'll want to use a concussion grenade or drop a mine close to him or something along those lines to pull him off and you'll want to perform the level 1 hack on this computer and get its get its 100 XP data store. That option's not available to me, being Factory Zero. So let's get the two beers over here. Make sure to grab this data storage device. There are three of them. You get one... Later on, you'll get 100 XP for each one, and you'll also get an achievement. Now let's open the weapon cabinet. We have two machine pistols, two packages of painkillers. Now let's check out this unlocked computer. From w.black at hzz.belltower.net to Robert Korn, SITREP, 
Corporal Korn, there has been a situation aboard the Hai Jinju. An armed stowaway has been captured. No further details at this time. However, Commander Burke has opted to board the ship once we approach RBS. I have apprised Lieutenant Commander Keitner of the circumstances, and she will be boarding as well. You will designate an escort for the commanders. The escort will stay behind on the ship under my orders and aid in transferring the prisoner once we are docked. You will arrange with Special Operations and Detention Silo Central for temporary access to the detention camp for the escort team. I do not want any incidents. No one is to speak to Burke unless directly addressed. No mention of detainees or otherwise. By God, I swear if anyone steps out of line, I will let Burke do what he will. Also, have Hammond send another base-wide security reminder. Burke will be on a rampage because of this breach. Surely he'll start a security assessment for all of RBS, so we'll have to be on our toes, Lieutenant Black. From Tyler Klein to Robert Korn, regarding board. What's she going to do? Keitner's got no pull here. I don't know what the brass were thinking about when they posted her here, but they weren't doing her any favors. Here's how busy I am. He made a bell tower logo. Klein. By the way, what's the comm situation? I've been getting flack that we were having problems contacting the incoming ships because of the storm. I'm assuming that's been cleared up? Robert Korn, r.korn at rbs.belltower.net, wrote, Hey, you lazy ass, what's up? I've got one of Burke's special goons hanging over me like, a, like some kind of vulture, so I'm pretending I'm busy. I wish Keitner would do something about them. I don't need any warm, fuzzy reminders of HS. I joined up for a nice paycheck, not to be bullied by some cyber nerd's wet dream. R. Now the security hub. It's unlocked. So we can shut off the cameras. That's nice. Alright. With that done, let's move through here and bag this guy. Pull him back to the office. Now he dropped a combat rifle. What a night. I'm gonna pull him into this office. You know, I'll probably hide him all the way down in the vent. Same as the other gentleman. Now, I'll search his body. He's carrying 110 credits. That leaves two guys on this floor. I just spotted one of them, but I'd like to... Oh, okay. I thought I could get into the other office this way. Let's come in here. This guy seems to be alone in this office. So we'll just take him down. He drops a machine pistol. He carries 60 credits. There is a vent. Now, over here in the desk drawers, we have a Cyber Boost Pro Energy Bar and five pistol bullets. The computer is unlocked, so let's jump in. From Bernard.bowls at hc.belltower.net to Frank Mangan regarding harvester concerns, Tong is a pain, but he knows his place. If he steps out of line, he knows BT will shut him down. I don't think his harvesters had anything to do with the explosion. I know Wang is spouting some crap about having seen some harvesters in the dock area days before the incident. Doesn't mean anything. They're everywhere, like rats. Tong has too good a deal going with us. The few clashes we have with his boys may as well be staged. He throws us a few, we throw him a few, plus the leftovers from OR. We may be able to spin the explosion to our advantage. The fear of more terrorism will surely result in more contracts for us, not less. If you've got some boys sitting around doing nothing, you might as well send them here. I can find something for them to do. Bernie. Major Bernard Bowles, Hengsha City Security Command, Bell Tower Associates, HC. Frank Mangan, f.mangan at rbs.belltower.net, wrote, Bernie. 
The harvester question has reached the highest levels in the company. There is some concern that repeated incidents may affect our standing and possibly inhibit further security contracts, specifically in the Pacific Rim. The Hanming explosion did not go over well. Will this Tong play ball, or are we going to have to make another example of him? I can send more men if you need them. Frank. From Brian.Dugan at HQ.BellTower.net to Frank Mangan, forward security contract. Frank, get on this. I've already sent word confirming that we are interested. Iron out the details and keep me in the loop. Brian Dugan. Najiba.Altoon at DOD.Gov.BN wrote, Dear Sirs, Despite what could be seen as negative press concerning your operations in China, namely Hangsha City, we are still very much interested in contracting Bell Tower Associates. As previously discussed, this would include the policing of Bandar Seri Bagawan as well as much of the countryside and our maritime interests, chiefly oil platforms. We would greatly appreciate a preliminary assessment and timeline for implementation of a Bell Tower security force at your earliest convenience, and thus commence negotiations in earnest. Najiba Alchun, Minister of Defense, Nagara Brunei Darussalam. From F. Burns at hq01.belltower.net to Frank Mangan. Contracts. Captain Mangan, I will require a number of contracts to be pulled and forwarded to my office. There is some question of Bell Tower's contracted obligations with various organizations in the vicinity of RBS due to the increased storm activity this season. The frequency and severity of the storm season may prove costly if we are contractually obligated to provide disaster response and support. We may have to find a way of massaging the agreements to be more favorable. I will send a list forthwith. Also, I will require a, re require a report on the possible profits from salvaging in these various contracted areas and if this may recoup some of our losses. Francis Burns, Legal and Public Relations, Bell Tower Associates, LDN. All right. Let's go ahead and pull his body into these vents. And let's see where this one goes. Oh, come on. Into the vent. There you go. There's a 200 point exploration bonus back here. Under the stairs, we find 200 credits, a nuke virus, and a Cyber Boost Pro Energy jar. Not bad. Let's head back into there. Now, I don't want to go upstairs just yet. Oh, these all have names. That was Protection Service Division. That was Logistics. This one, which we can get to through the vent, is Operation Security. Now over here, we have Special Operations, which has a level 2 lock on it, which I can't hack, obviously. I saw the last guy on this level. This is the laser terminal, I think. No, no, it controls this vent hatch. My mistake. <clears throat> Another level three, and I don't have the code yet. There's that guy. It's like getting to him, I have to come from the other side, which is fine. There's the third hackable alarm panel. Army operations. Oh, well, what's in here? A locked computer. Level two, I have no code. Doesn't look like there's anything else.
That one goes to the basement, I remember. All right. Well, let's go take down the fourth gentleman. And that will clear out this floor for now. It'll repopulate later, but that's not a big deal. That, of course, is the passage to the detention wing, which I don't want to mess with just yet. Let's crawl under here. And let's drop this last guy. All right, he dropped a pistol. He's carrying a beer and 70 credits. And we've got a level two door into communications security, which I also can't seem to hack. And don't have the co and don't have the code for. I think that's the more important piece of that puzzle. Let's put him in the vents, too. So I have found two out of five hackable computers, all three hackable doors, three out of four hackable alarm panels, and the terminal controlling the vent hatch. Is there anything I'm missing? There's the fourth alarm panel. There's another way upstairs, which we'll get to in a minute. For now, let's check out these restrooms. Here's the ladies' room. Nothing. Nothing and nothing. All right, let's check out the men's. Nothing, nothing, but we do have a new vent. Gets us another 200 XP exploration bonus, spits us out under these other stairs. We find Typhoon ammo, a Cyberboost Pro Energy Bar and a Pocket Secretary. Contracts. Oh, that's the email we read. Okay, must be a must be another copy of something we already have. So I guess it's time to head upstairs. There are only two guys up here. So just a recap of what I'm still missing from down there. Three computers and some exploration. Everything else has been spotted, flagged, covered, even though I can't do anything about most of it. Oh, this takes us right back into the loading bay. Okay. Let's 
let's head up these stairs. I gotta make... Sorry, I just feel compelled to really double check my vents, make sure there's no way into those offices. Let's clear the upstairs first. We have to come back down here anyway. There are only two guys up here for now. Let's drop this one. Let's drag him down. He dropped a machine pistol. I'm just racing him to the stairway. Get him to a good hiding spot. I like inside the vent. Alright, and he carries 120 credits. That's fine. Let's drag this guy farther in. Just so we can drag this guy farther in. There you guys go. Hang out, have fun. Only one guy left to worry about. Up on the top floor. If I hide right here... I should be clear of the cameras. When he comes back, I should be able to bag him. And then eventually drag him downstairs, same as the others. He dropped, looks like, a shotgun. He's carrying a beer. Alright, let's go stash his body as soon as the camera lets us. Hide him in the same vent. Right back here, y'all get nice and cozy. All right. Now we're really ready to check out the rest of the upstairs. That looks like it just drops down into the corridor. Here's Burke's office. Oh, it's only a level one hack. I guess we can get in, good. Oh yeah, if we drop down here, we just end up back in the hallway, so... Let's head back upstairs. 
and we'll hack open Burke's office. I think I'm actually out of view, but I'm not certain, so I will try to be fast. data stores 25 XP each plus 25 for the hack itself and we can go into Burke's office well, he's got some whiskey which I guess I'll go ahead and grab there's an ebook over here a coalition for liberty the UN's responsibility to the world in an age that has seen the rise of terrorism as a means of geopolitical change, an age where no one nation can truly be called upon to shoulder the burden of security and law enforcement, one must dare to consider that the time has come for the United Nations to step up and accept this responsibility. A force unbound by borders or the whims of governments and corporate interests is needed in this uncertain time. In the wake of ongoing atrocities perpetrated by fanatics and criminals, the need for such an organization cannot be denied. <clears throat> it is proposed that the UN commence a series of evaluation studies to consider with great seriousness the future creation of a new transnational anti-terror force. The freedoms we take for granted are under siege, and without guardians of liberty they may be lost. Now, oh, there are a few things, uh, other things to do in here. On Burke's desk, we have a Burke's Spare Retinal Prosthesis. Geithner, any reason Burke's got a spare retinal prosthesis lying around his office? He just received it this evening from the Tai Young Medical Corporation. HQ had a custom set made especially for him as a thanks for so many years of good service. Why? He'll probably be real angry when he realizes it's missing. Jensen out. We'll hold on to that. It'll definitely be useful later. That's the same newspaper we already read. Now his computer has a level 3 lock and I don't have the passcode. Under his desk you see the button. Pushing that gets us a 300 XP exploration bonus. But I have to admit I don't know... Ah, uh, there it is. It opens this wall safe to his secret stash. Burke's revolver, two things of ammo, and 300 credits. There's also a vent. Let's check it out. It goes downstairs. I imagine it gets us into those areas I couldn't explore, get into myself. Let's finish poking around up here first. Now that door... Let me think. Well, let me check. Because I think it's locked and it's too high to hack. You know, anything above level one is too high to hack, but. On the wall here, of course, there's another alarm panel for you enterprising hackers who aren't playing Factory Zero. Natanya Keitner's office, yes. It's got a level three lock on it. That vent took us in there and we'll. Check it out in just a second. After I finish checking out everything else up here. So down here... Ah oh yes, we have the level 5 pass back into loading bay 2. You might remember that door. Over here we have an unlocked door, Bell Tower Alpha. Let's see what's in there. We've got... Two lockers. That left one's empty, right one's empty. A 
Now back here we have another copy of that same newspaper. We've got really no desk drawers. We've got stun gun darts on this back desk, and here we have a drawer with two more stun gun darts and 130 credits. Over here, we have a level one locked computer, which I'll go ahead and hack. Fifty credits in the Access data store, plus twenty-five for the hack. From Tyler Klein to Myron Goldman, a little more practice. All right, you did good with the straight sub. Here's something a little tougher. Looks like a cipher. Good luck with this one. We'll make a code breaker out of you yet, Klein. From H. Lucas at HQ. Belltower.net to Myron Goldman, investigation RBS-09/554. Regarding request for official investigation, RBS-09-554, formally denied, Lieutenant. The Provost Marshal's office understand the chain of command and the necessity for such hierarchy, especially at an active site such as Rifleman Bank Station. However, be advised that it has been made clear in previous correspondences with Lieutenant Commander Keitner that we will conduct no further investigations into alleged anomalous procedures at Rifleman Bank Station. Should the commander continue to request official sanctions through your office, you are to remind her of this fact. Following this, you will file a report to us. If the sanctions in question refer to the RBS detention camp or any related area, your report should also be forwarded to Commander Burke as it is under his aegis. Under no circumstances will you pursue an independent investigation or attempt to gain access to the, to the detention camp without express authorization from Commander Burke. These orders come from the highest levels, eyes only. Colonel Harris Lucas, Provost Marshal's Office, Bell Tower Associates, LDN. Okay, now let's loop back through Burke's office, go through the vent, and check out Keitner's. He didn't have any desk drawers either, did he? No. So here we are in Keitner's office. can open the door so that it's unlocked. She's got two lockers, machine pistol ammo, under this desk we have a 25 credit chip, on it we have an ebook. The Bell Tower Way, Company History. In the 1990s, decorated officer Roger St. John Foulkes left the British Army and became a strategic consultant for a UK-based private military contractor, PMC. What he learned there encouraged him to strike out on his own. Calling in favors from contacts gleaned from years in the Army, St. John Foulkes set up Bell Tower UK, the precursor to the Bell Tower Group, PLC. His personal ethos informed everything about the company's operations and corporate policy and Bell Tower became known for its refusal to engage in any contracts of an ethically challenged n nature. At first, Bell Tower operated in minor conflict hotspots, handling low-level corporate security, kidnap and retrieval, and close protection details. By the early 2000s, the company had expanded its operations and grown into Bell Tower Associates. An umbrella entity, the Bell Tower Group, now included subdivisions such as Bell Tower Maritime Security, Bell Tower Alpha, Hackwall Data Protection Services, and Sky Secure Aviation. Now on her desk, inside the drawer, there are two stun gun darts. We got, looks like, pictures of her. Happy birthday at the Twelve Apostles. Found your earring yet? The picture is signed. There's a picture of her when she's a kid. Uh, under her desk is a damage upgrade I almost missed. That would have been foolish. Guess she's Jewish. And... Level 3 hack with no code. Alright, that's it for in here for now, so... 
Let's go down through this vent. And see where it spits me out. Aha! A 200 point exploration bonus. Where am I, anyway? Oh yeah, I think I'm under that, or through that special vent that had its own dedicated terminal keeping it closed. Yes, right here. Now inside here, what do we have? This terminal will disable the laser system. Unfortunately, I don't have the code and it's higher than level one. Here's an unlocked security hub, which will let me turn off the upstairs cameras. Now here we have the third RNG book, 200 XP. The Threat of Cybernetic Discognition Disorder, op-ed column in the new Cybernetics Journal, Fall 2015 edition by Hugh Darrow. Like every other new technology, from the automobile to television, human augmentation has been pilloried as a menace that will destroy our society from within and reduce us all to drooling imbeciles. I'm certain that, like me, you're just as tired of this reaction to dog whistle punditry, but we can't shy away from the fact that, indeed, cybernetics are a double-edged sword. By making human augmentation technology free for all, we run the risk of it falling into the hands of distressed and mentally unfit individuals. There's no denying that augmentations change the way you think about yourself, but no more than one would, but no more than one would after cosmetic surgery. And this so-called cybernetic discognition disorder seems to be little more than a convenient label slapped on a much deeper problem. The fact is, adding cybernetic implants to your body will no more destroy your sanity than playing video games will make you a psychopath. What we must be watchful for are those whose already fragile mental states will be destabilized further by augmentation. Now, is there any other way out of here? No. So the big question is, how do we get into those other two rooms? That I don't know. There's got to be another way in. There always is. Let me see if I missed something. No, that only goes down. Well, I did miss a credit chip with 150 credits on it, so there's that.
That vent just takes me over under the stairs. That one gets me into this hallway, but doesn't do me a lot of good unless I find another vent somewhere. Maybe I get the codes later. I guess that must be it. There are no other vents. Alright, there's nothing I haven't checked out. found three locked computers. There are two left. Supposed to be two left, and I imagine they're in those two offices I haven't been able to get into. There is a vent that goes in there. But it might just cut between those two offices. That's that's the bit I don't know. Hmm. Pretty certain there are no alternative ways out of here, so. can't see a vent from this door. That doesn't mean it's not there, of course. Communication security. One other room I haven't checked yet. Let's go back to army operations. Let's make sure I didn't miss anything in there.
looks like I didn't. Just another locked computer. Okay, well, I guess I'll eventually get the code to that door. It's the only thing I can think of. So I'm going to move on to the entrance to the detention camp. Which actually is probably faster to go up here and jump through the little hole. This really bothers me, not gonna lie. But, I tell you what, I'll get to the detention camp entrance, I'll end the video there, and then I'll hunt around on the internet for how to get into those two rooms. And if I missed something and there is a good way, I'll do that at the very beginning of the next video. So anyway. This has been Let's Play Deus Ex Human Revolution The Missing Link. We basically cleared the administration sector. The only places we didn't get into yet are special operations and communications security because I couldn't find a way in. So next time we will, if it's possible, after I look it up, I'll tackle those areas and then we'll move on through the detention camp. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Alright folks, this is gonna end up spliced onto the previous video because I figured out how to get into those spots that I couldn't get into before. Pretty straightforward. Just uh, really just a little bit of cleanup work on uh, the admin offices before we proceed. There are a few things that we missed. First, I believe there's something right here in the logistics office. Maybe not. Ah, uh, yes. A pocket secretary I missed. Need cable.dax from n.zaharia at rbs.belltower.net to t.morino at rbs.belltower.net. 5768. BTW, Quinn's got a two for one deal going on trade ins. I got a great haul on some new stuff that just came out over on the mainland. Hopefully the cracks are legit and I don't get my account banned like last time. Fucking shoddy pirates. Z. Hey, I just got a maintenance call on some faulty laser grids in the offices, but everything checked out on the hardware in. Ran a diagnostic on the diffraction limiters. It looks like someone missed a decimal or two in the pulse modulation timers. Anyway, I need the code for the admin cable duct access. Merino. So, of course, that's just another way into the sort of security room. Here's in the protection service division. There's another thing I missed. There's a pocket secretary up here on top of the service ta server tower. Terminal code for admin lasers. One of the engineers, Marino, from g.hammond at rbs.belltower.net to rbs-bt underscore opsec underscore all. One of the engineers, Marino, was forced to reset the terminal for the security lasers in the administration offices. Because of that, the code has changed to 1355. Pass it along to whoever needs to know. Gabriel Hammond, Operations Security, Bell Tower Associates. Now what that means for us... With those two bits of information in hand, and not that we needed the uh, code to this, since we already had it open, but... We are gonna run into here and turn off the lasers.
which will make getting around a lot easier. A few more things to do. Won't take long, I promise. Finish up Quinn's scavenger hunt. Yeah, so we can get back there unmolested. Turns out there is a vent in here. I just wasn't looking on the right level. I was looking on the ground, but the vent is up here on top. Oh, as we move through this vent... We get 200 points for getting into the Special Operations Office, which is now unlocked. So, let's poke around in here. The newspaper we've already read. In the desk drawer, we find painkillers, a Cyberboost Pro Energy Pack, and 20 credits. Under the desk, we find a pocket secretary. New door from s.lawson at rbs.belltower.net to m.lantmanning at rbs.belltower.net. Due to the recent malfunction of your office door, we have installed a new one. Compulsory designation of a new key code is mandatory under these circumstances, so please note the following. Office, communication, security. You might recognize that as the other place we couldn't get into. And the code is 1550. Now, while we're in here, Here's another computer we have no password for. We'd have to hack it, but we can't on Factory Zero. What a shame. That looks like a weakened wall we could punch through. And here is the scope assembly for the rocket launcher. A zero point completionist bonus. Wahoo. And now let's head out here. Let's run down to maintenance and wrap up Quinn's scavenger hunt, which should get us another nice completionist bonus. Communication security is the only place we haven't explored, and I suspect it has the last hackable computer inside it. So, let's run back over and visit Quinn. I think I ran right past him. There he is. Right. So, what's the story? Special offer. Got those parts for me? Yeah, take a look. Hi. Let me see what you got there. Fucking deadly. That's all of them. Give me a sec with me tools, I'll get them sorted out right and proper. Right then. That'll do you. Anything else I can be helping you with then? That's it. I gotta go. I think it goes without saying, but uh, we never met, alright? So there's a rocket launcher at my feet. That actually ends up perfect, because I don't want to pick up weapons anyway. Oh, nah, let's not take the vent. Let's take the elevator. Simpler. Let's check out the communication security office, then we ought to be done. So, 
having the laser grid down makes things much easier. And I just have to do a better job looking for pocket secretaries and vents on the walls. That's the bottom line. So now with the code to this door in hand, we can explore this last little room. There's an e-book in here. A frontier too far, the state of space, circa 2027. An impoverished NASA and a marginalized European space agency mean the dream of travel to Mars and beyond goes unfulfilled. Only China's and America's militaries field regular flights, watching each other down the barrels of their particle cannons. In space, the coldest of cold wars rumbles on, echoing the NATO-Soviet confrontations of the 1980s. At present, the only space science of any note is taking place at Moonbase Omega, a small colony near Clavius. Plans to expand the facility exist, but it may be some time before they come to fruition. However, in near-Earth orbit, corporate interests thrive, with automated orbital factories producing materials in microgravity environments. Among constellations of communications and spy satellites, other plans for space commercialization are in development, including an orbital resort for the mega-rich. A slow and steady corporate takeover of the high frontier looms. Now there's a silencer and a level 4 computer, which you can hack if you're not doing Factory Zero. Over here we've got a credit chip with 60 credits on it. And that really is it. Now we are ready to move on to the detention camp. Let me make absolutely certain, just glancing through here. We'll get... When we come back, we'll get five extra soldiers to take down, but other than that, we've got everything covered. So, now I'll update all of those saves, and this really has been Let's Play Deus Ex Human Revolution The Missing Link. We've completed all the side quests, there aren't any more side missions in the entire DLC. So, we're moving on to the detention camp. The admin sector is clear except for the soldiers who will spawn in later. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.